Are you guys ready for a good old-fashioned video? I want to make some neat store displays or uh, front window displays at the makerspace. So let's go to the creek, find some garbage, and put it together, kind of like what Tim Hunkin did, like this. Oh, I'm drawing inspiration from that. I like this bridge a lot. This is cool. So south of the makerspace and my home, across this bridge, we have this road that goes down to one of my favorite parks. And if you go this way, you go to another favorite park. And then when you get to Pinnock uh, Trail, Pinnock Trail, you come down here. And then down this road, you come to Pinnock Woods. When I can get a proper camera set up, we're coming back out here. Something you might notice, there's bits of a building down there. That is a wall. So that has a bunch of slate shingles, shakes, whatever they're called, and a bunch of brick, because there were some buildings here before, but it never was quite built up. This park, Pinnock Woods, apparently was owned by the Pinnock family. And I, if I remember right, they grew flowers or something like that, like tulips or something. And this was all like their farmland back in the 1800s. And now it's all park. It's all so flat. Here's some footage from it in the spring. You can really see how flat it is and you can really tell why they would grow flowers here because it's absolutely gorgeous. I may have gone down the wrong path, but I guess there is no wrong path here. I'm almost seeing poison ivy, but not really. So, I was here a few weeks ago with Thice, and I remember seeing a metal bar. Now, I also have a friend that I made out here named Rick. He runs the stained glass shop. He is the kind of person that you can just talk to forever. And it's actually a detriment, where sometimes we have to be like, I, I'm going, I'm going, otherwise we're gonna talk for a long time. And we're scheming. I'm gonna teach him how to weld, and I'm gonna get to use his kiln to fire some, uh, to fire some glass. And so I'm also keeping an eye out for any glass that I find, especially milk glass. Piece of wooden lap. Okay, I'll take it. I had thought I would keep metal. And I shall. Look at there. Well, that's, that's pretty good. Is that still cable? This is why I love this area. And this water, it's not like in Illinois. It all has nice rocks in it. You can see the stones. And thusly, the water is so clear. Sure, I might not drink it, because I don't want to drink stuff that's like that, because it has so much civilization in front of it. Oh, blue. OK, fine. I kind of have to keep that. I'm a sucker for cobalt blue glass. 
I'm going to come out here sometime though and I'm going to get all this glass and I'm going to start doing projects where we melt down glass possibly with solar power and maybe sell a product. Oh fine, more blue glass. I want orange for this next project but blue will have to do. I'm not seeing much at the moment but the, you just have to kind of look around Oh, this is a nice spot. I, I wish Scythe could be here. We come here a lot. But things have been so hectic lately. Oh, look at that. Oh, by the way, this is just some string trimmer. It's trash, but I'll pick it up anyway. Um, that's... I'm going to keep that. That's a cool sharpening stone. Looks like it was cracked there, and this has been out here for a long time. Just look how much it's weathered. Because if it was new, the crack here, you can assume that that's going to be a nice sharp edge. But it's been out here so long, maybe 50 years, that it's all weathered smooth. I get barely one foot, and I already see this. So this glass is a little bit pinkish. I believe that means that it was made from 1895 to about 1920 when they would use manganese to clear the glass. But what they didn't know at the time, and what they quickly learned in the next few decades and why they stopped doing it, this additive cleared up the glass for a little while, but then the ultraviolet light turned it purple. Oh gosh, that's a, that's a big piece of glass right there. Well, I have to keep that just because it's, it's a nice thick piece. So this, this is a, a gasket with rust on it. So that means that this is like from a mason jar and this gasket has out survived the lid that it was connected to. So that's pretty long lasting rubber and it's still, yeah, it's still pretty squishy. So that's kind of cool. If it didn't have rust on it, I would assume it's probably from a VCR, but those rubber belts tend to degrade quite fast. Okay, I'm not finding as much metal, but I am finding ceramics like this piece of a fuse. Wait, what is this? Oh. Oh. That's a long piece of rebar. Might be from some structure that was in the creek. Yeah, that's that's tied to something, some footing or whatever. Oh, whoa. Look at those. Like metal bands from a wagon wheel or something like that. This makes me think I should have probably had sandals or hip waders so I can go out there because that's probably where most of the stuff is. I'm seeing all sorts of straight stuff out there. Right, so these bars are pretty wet. I'll let those dry out for a bit while I look for other things. I'm not quite happy with that. It'd be nice if I could find some angle iron or something. I can definitely do something with that though. You know, rusted metal bars, it, it gives a different feel to it. So maybe I should use that for something else. Because those bars, they give me 
creativity in a different direction. I'm, I'm curious what direction that would be. But only a little bit of looking and I already found that. I'm sure there's other pieces of metal down here. Just waiting to be found. If I had a metal detector and if I was able to go into the creek, I would find so much. But I borrowed Thice's nice walking shoes because my feet were getting a bit sore and uh, I cannot, I cannot get those wet. Okay, fine, we'll just make a thing of it. Unfortunately, I, I've been inside most of the time and so walking on gravel, it's a little bit painful. Normally, I work outside without my shoes on. So, like, I, I keep the floor of my workshop really, really clean out of no uh, bits of metal and stuff. And so then, by May or so, my feet, they're still soft, but they're just thicker. And then I can walk on gravel and such. It doesn't, it doesn't give you rough feet, but it just makes your feet thicker and, like, able to walk on this kind of stuff. But I've been mostly inside this year, and so it's a little bit painful. I don't have my summer feet yet. But yeah, this is where you need hip waders, because look at that. Oh my god. That's a wagon. And I don't know what that is. Okay, I'm at, I found a part where I can get across without getting my jeans too wet. Oh, we're getting it. Oh, these rocks are hard. But this is so much nicer than what I'm used to in Illinois because over there, you know, it's farmland. And so you have uh, so much mud, like this over here. It's just, it's all of that. Okay, so we can cross sometimes. Okay, so that's the place where we can pass. This is a little bit deeper, but do you see there's something circular right here? And that gets really deep over there, so I don't think I can get very close, but I think I can get a piece of something to go get that. Oh, what is that? weird it's like a oh it's a wheel it's a tiny old wheel you can see the spokes a very very small rim maybe like a baby stroller or something well i don't feel like going through that because that looks nasty so we have some metal sticking out of the hill here and some nasty buildup that's for sure i don't know if i want to go through that but i might be able to skirt along there the, yeah, no poison ivy. And we can go check that out. Somebody did put that in the wall. That must be like a, a place to sit to fish or something. Just another element of the American condition. A drug needle just sitting there. Yay. Oh, I just realized there's a, there's a bunch of them. So I'm a little further past where, where we got that big piece of uh, steel. And look what I found. Yeah, that is useful. It's part of something. Got me that piece of wood as a walking stick. It's been quite helpful.
that shot took up so much space that it actually filled up my phone. But this bar, this is exactly what I wanted. Maybe some angle iron, sure, but this, this is substantial. I like this. It'll look really nice once I clean it up. This pipe must be pretty rusty on the inside because check this out. Yeah, the seam is splitting. Interesting, interesting. Good junk, good junk. Oh, I just realized I lost. I did get water in my thing on my jeans, just a little bit, but ah, I thought I had a perfect score. You know, tiring your feet out by walking on gravel, first it starts out kind of painful, and then it gets less painful and then after a while it starts to really get sore and then when you put your shoes back on it's like so nice and it doesn't make your feet super sore if you do it a lot it, it's like this tiredness in your feet and it's like I had a really nice foot rub I've been having a lot of foot aches lately and now I know those are going to be gone because just all the poking of the rocks it's kind of weird how our bodies need to be used in order to operate effectively. We're not like a normal tool where if you set it aside and don't use it, it'll stay good. You have to like kind of abuse your body a little bit. You have to go for walks and runs and walk barefoot and that can undo a lot of, like that's, that's maintenance, it's weird. I think it's time for me to stop looking at the sun and for me to buy a wire wheel to finally clean this stuff.